to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, we're going to go out in the garage today. I've never done a video yet on my mobile rig, and I wanted to show you what I did with a uh, 2012 Hyundai Sonata. Uh, you know, the inside of that car has no straight lines. So uh, when I got ready to do a mobile in there, I actually took it to a fellow that uh, has done a lot of uh, police car radios. Uh, he's got a little shop over in Greenville, Texas off of uh, I-30 and uh, he installed that radio where you can't see any wires anywhere uh, in the car. And uh, I'm going to show you that today out in the garage. So without further ado, let's head out in the garage and look at the 2012 Hyundai Sonata with a dual band radio in it. It's actually an ICOM 880H with D-Star. That's what's in that car. Uh, using a diamond mount and a diamond antenna. So let's head out there now and you All take All right, it. everybody. So we're out in the garage and I wanted to take you through the installation of a uh, dual band uh, VHF UHF radio on this Hyundai Sonata 2012 model. Uh, I actually had some professionals do the work, okay? After telling them what, what I wanted, uh, they were able to do some really good work on this car, so I wanted to show you how they did it. So in the first place, um, I'm using a diamond antenna on this car and I mounted it sort of in the spot where the old AM FM radio antennas used to be mounted. And I'm sure that people that don't know anything about uh, amateur radio think that this is a AM FM radio antenna. They don't even know any difference on it. So let me show you how they did that inside the trunk. So here we are uh, looking at the underside of the antenna and as you can see it's just got some Allen screws where it screws into the uh, metal makes contact and you can see the antenna wire running underneath this little box right here runs right over here and then it follows the normal cabling for the car so it basically becomes invisible from there on. And uh, the folks that did this over in Greenville, Texas, uh, have done uh, police radios. So they kind of knew what they were doing or getting into when I brought the car to them. Didn't cost very much to install this. I was really surprised. If I told you that they did this installation for under hundred and twenty dollars the whole thing would you believe me I don't know anyway so anyway that antenna wire runs back here along the floor behind this kick plate and then under the uh, driver's seat and that's where they actually put the radio was under the driver's seat now, one of the other things they did that was really neat was they grounded all that radio to the actual seat bolts that go into the frame. So the radio has a ground on it. And the other neat, neat thing that they did was they brought the control head up this side panel right here. That's really all they took off was this little side panel so it's back there let me kind of step into the car and I'll show you where they mounted the control head it's kind of neat so they came over here and came up this and I was real concerned that uh, they were going to pull the headliner but they didn't they didn't pull the headliner they mounted the control head in the sunglass holder all right and he had a special tool where he could reach across this headliner and grab that wire 
and pull it across and plug it in here. He did not remove the headliner to do this. The whole installation took him a little bit over one hour. A little bit over one hour, but not much over one hour to install the whole thing. So the head is here. The radio is under the driver's seat. Now let me take you under the hood of the car for a minute and uh, show you that. So here we are looking under the hood of the car and he came directly here to the battery and mounted it. Now not only did he mount it, and I know you can't see under here, but once he got past this point, he put everything into plastic conduit. So all the rest of the wiring, except for the two connectors, which are right here, uh, directly back to the radio, from then on it's in conduit. And it, he found a spot through the firewall. He knew exactly where it was, no problem. And he came back through here and down this plate again and went under the seat under a little bit of the carpeting right here just went under the seat under here under the seat and plugged in the power to the radio so basically you can't see any wires now where did he put the microphone well he came out from under the seat with the microphone cable and he mounted a little holder right down here and again it's dark in the car even though it's daylight but the microphone is right there on the side of the seat again hidden out of normal view uh, I can reach it very easily from the driver's seat doesn't interfere with anything um, while you're driving and uh, it just comes right out and I can talk on it. So it's mounted on the side of, of this. Now, when I go to the car wash, what do I do? Because these people, you know, they like to move your seats around. Well, I remove the microphone. I have a little extension cord uh, plugged into the mic. It's about four feet long and a uh, mic extension cord and I just unplug it right down there by the seat and uh, pull the microphone out and stick it in the console until I get the car back from the, out of the car wash. So anyway, there it is. Let me kind of shut these. I'll show you the car. And so there you go. There's the car. And literally the only thing that gives it away to a ham radio operator is this antenna. Uh, but like I said, I'll bet you money, non-amateur radio type people don't really know that that's a radio antenna. They think it's a regular AM FM antenna. And if you look inside the car, of course, you don't see anything. You don't see any wires. You don't see uh, uh, any control heads or a big radio hanging down anywhere. It's just basic. Hello, everybody. I'm back inside again, and I wanted to show you uh, this antenna so that it'd be easier for you to find it. So the antenna that's actually on the car that I'm using is uh, diamond. Uh, the base is a diamond too, of course, but uh, this is the antenna that I'm using. I'm looking at the uh, diamond antenna site right now on the internet. You'll just Google uh, diamondantenna.net. Uh, you'll go right to their site. Anyway, I'm using this NR770. Uh, in black uh, There's a couple of other I think there's even one in white uh, It's a dual band. Uh, it's got a little bit of gain on it 3 dBi on uh, 2 meters and 5 and a half on uh, 70 centimeters can take up to 200 watts um, It's about 38 inches from the tip to the very bottom now the reason I chose this one 
uh, first place it it looks pretty good on the car it actually looks like an old style uh, radio antenna where I mounted it on the rear of the car um, and it goes right in the garage with no problems whatsoever and uh, I can probably get into some of those uh, low uh, roof parking lots without any problems whatsoever so I can just pull right into the garage and close the garage door and it uh, doesn't affect the antenna at all that's why I chose this uh, 38 inch uh, dual band so anyway, there's the antenna. Now the mount, you know, the, a lot of people use something that looks sort of like this as a mount. But in my case, uh, it sure wouldn't look very nice on the car. And Diamond uh, makes one that uh, really looks good on a car. Now if I had a truck, I'd I might find something different, but uh, on the car, I chose this one right here, this K600M trunk mount. Let me blow it up, the picture up a little bit. There it is. And uh, as you noted, uh, when we looked at the car earlier, uh, it fits on the side of the trunk, uh, lip of the trunk. I guess you could mount it uh, in the center top of the trunk lid, but uh, I noted on my car before I mounted it that if I opened the trunk, then the antenna would hit the roof. So I didn't mount it in the center. I mounted it uh, kind of where uh, some of the older cars used to have the radio antennas uh, off of the side of the trunk lid on the driver's side so uh, notice that it's got a nice smooth surface when I take the car to the car wash I just unscrew the antenna and they furnish you with a little cap little plastic cap you can put on here I keep that in the console of the car and when I go to the uh, car wash I take the antenna off and screw that little cap on here. It makes it all waterproof. And of course, the way this is made, it's, it's not going to get caught in any of the equipment at the car wash. It seems to just go right through it with the, these slick sides here and kind of a rounded uh, shape. So that was one of the reasons I chose it, and it looks pretty good on, on uh, my Hyundai. And, uh, you know, it's in black, doesn't really stick out like a sore thumb, and uh, I'm sure that most regular people just think it's a regular OAM FM uh, radio antenna of some sort. They don't even notice it. On well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video uh, on a little mobile installation. I hope it gave you some ideas of how maybe you might mount your uh, dual band into your car and uh, make it kind of uh, bandit proof because uh, nobody can actually see the radio. As I usually say, I wish you clear skies and 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Yeah, still up there. Everybody be good. See y'all.